so we first, I think, heard about Her Too Low, or at least I did, with Destiny Breast 04. And seeing that data for the first time was very impactful. And right there, I think it really made a splash because you know, it, it shifted this paradigm of how we think of Her Too directed therapies. I remember being very surprised at that in the Destiny Breast 06 trial, I think the number was very high, about 60% of tumors that were locally scored, HER2 zero, actually fell into the category of HER2 ultra low and even HER2 low, some of those. So that I think underscores how there is the potential to miss patients that would be you know, in that DB06 group and eligible now for a therapy with TDXD. In a way, it simplifies things because now as long as you have some, her two, you don't have to necessarily distinguish between ultra low and low, you can use TDXD. So it does simplify because there can be some difference in terms of whether a slide is her to low versus ultra low, difference among pathologists. So this does simplify things. What do you think about, and tell us a little bit about that evolution of first even deciding to try to use this HER2 directed ADC in a population that was not HER2 positive? Yeah. So, as, as a reminder, Destiny Breast 04 was for patients with HER2 low metastatic breast cancer who had received at least one prior line of chemotherapy and showed that TDXD was superior to standard chemotherapy, both in terms of progression free survival and overall survival, and that was a practice-changing study presented at ASCO in a plenary session, and after that we started using the HER2 low terminology and started using TDXD. Then Destiny Breast 06 was different from 04 in that it did not require prior line of chemotherapy, also included HER2 ultra low, so it was a broader patient population, and that's why the comparator was TDXD versus uh, chemotherapy with capecitabine or Paclitaxel.